In this video, I'd like to show you three ways that you can upload data programmatically and run it through an FME server job. We'll start by logging into the FME server web user interface. Then we'll navigate to one of the examples, one of the samples that ships with FME server, the Easy Translator. Uh, so out of the box, this won't be programmatic, but I'll show you uh, the basic upload mechanism. You select the files that you want to upload, click Upload, then you can choose the source file that you want to actually work on. There we go. And you click Run. So that's uh, non-programmatic, out of the box. Now how do we take that and upload the data and run the job all in one call? How do we do that from, a, from any kind of program? Well, we have a handy little uh, show request that will help you build your own web page and that's kind of how I'm going to demonstrate this today. I'm not going to uh, build my own program. Uh, my program skills are not that great so I'm going to use this little form snippet here to uh, illustrate how you can you can do this programmatically. Okay, so take the form snippet, put it into notepad here and then I'm going to save that in a web accessible folder. So let's see inside of FME server ships with with an application server so I can put it inside there and I'll call this upload one save it there HDM uh, and so let's go in and view this form got to spell localhost right. There's the form. Uh, so it's only got three uh, boxes here so we can easily fix that so that we can upload four files. Save that, reload. And then again the process is pretty much the same. Um, we're you know making a, a web page here but I'm going to show you the actual call uh, that's being made in the background. So you do that, and then it remembers the default from before, but if I hadn't, uh, it didn't remember, I would have put in the, the file that I want it to work on out of these four. Just the name, not, not any paths or anything. Hit Run, and it posts to uh, the web user interface and says, here's the file, here's the name of the file that I want you to work on, and go to it. So what does that actually do in the background? Well, let's bring up a program I like to use called Live HTTP Headers turn capture on and when I hit run it will actually capture what's happening so what it's doing is it's posting to localhost to FME server that's the web interface and it's telling it to invoke the job submitter with this workspace this repository and then this is the kind of stuff it's passing up so multi-part form data and the files as well as the uh, the file it wants to work on is there as well so you just have to make a call like this from your program to the web interface. That's one way to do it. Um, a second way, the second way to do it is, and this is a bit more flexible in some ways, is to upload the data in one call and then pass that data set path to uh, the FME server job in a separate web call. So to do that, um, you won't be using the web interface. The best way to start is probably to take a look at the reference manual. So this is number two. FME, sure, uh, FME server ships with documentation, of course, and part of that is a reference manual, which is kind of an expert level documentation. Uh, in there you can go and you can see all the APIs and stuff, and what I'm looking for is, is the utility services, data upload service, and then in here it describes the different uh, things that I can upload, uh, the options I can use, um, if you're using a program and not a browser, you're going to probably need to deal with the session ID. We'll see that being returned um, in a second. So uh, take note of that. And then we can see some examples in here. And if we scroll down to the third example, this is the kind of URL that we want to use. Uh, and the reason is when you upload data, it returns an obfuscated path, which you can then pass to, uh, pass to FME server uh, to run the job. So let's take this and y copy it and we'll build a form. And I'm really quick, well not really, but I've actually got a form ready here that, 
that has that URL in it. So if I just expand this a little bit, I can see there's the URL, localhost, data upload, samples, and then I'm using Easy Translator, which is a bit different. And then uh, here are those parameters you see in there in hidden fields, and then I've got the file upload parameters as well. So I've set up my my. This is a uh, uh, would be effect is effectively a call to upload the data and then return back the same sort of thing you see right here. So let's go and do that. I should be able to, to pop that up here. Let me uh, let's see. Should be upload to .htm. So very simple. I'm not running the job right now. I'm simply selecting the data uploading it, getting it onto the server in this call. Like so. Hit run. Boom. This is a response back. It says, okay, I've put the data up there and remember I want the tab file. So in the next job, all I really have to do is pass along this value, this value to uh, to the, uh, the, the job to call it. So what's that URL? To get that URL, I come back and actually it is this complete URL right here copy that out and I can paste it into here and the only thing that I really want out of there is the source data parameter so let's see source format we don't need unless we want to set that of course we don't need coordinate system there it is source data set I can delete that out and I'm gonna set it to well the value that I got back which is right here. So obfuscated, meaning that you can't tell what the root is. I simply copy it. I come up into here. I paste that. And then again, when I hit enter, it's going to submit it. But this time, it's submitting it direct to the service. So this is important if you're setting up security and you're securing uh, the web interface versus the job submitter. The two methods I've shown so far are, are different uh, web applications. But nonetheless, it takes that data. Um, from that location where we uploaded it and runs it. So again, this would be a separate call you'd make in your program. You make the first call to upload the data to this URL here. You make the second call um, to actually use that data. So that's the first two calls. And then what's the, the third one? Well, the third one is very easy. You, you build your own application. It uploads the data. And then from that application, you effectively pass the, the data set path to the job. So it wouldn't be obfuscated in that case. You, your program would have uploaded it and it would know that it's at C, temp, and then wherever you actually ended up putting the data. Again, you hit, uh, well, here I hit enter, but in the program you're running, you would simply do a post to that URL which you got from the show request and you're off and going. So that's the three ways to, to do upload. Uh, the direct the upload and run through the web user interface, make a, one call, um, and then the more flexible, I would say, is the number two, where you upload the data in one call, get back some XML, you can also get JSON if you want, but get back some XML that tells you uh, the paths to those files, and then pass one of those paths along to, uh, to the, the actual job, to the service itself to be run. And then, uh, and then the third one is to build your own application, which you kind of lose out on, on, on the flexibility of FME Server, the ability to use something that's already built. But you can build your own web application to upload the data, and then it's just a matter of passing the path along to the FME Server job. And so if you want to take this one step further and, and wrap up the upload and make it look very nice, uh, we have an example on FMEpedia using that same workspace, Easy Translator. You can run it live, you can get the, the sample code, and it offers basically just a nice framework using our, our REST API to pull the, pull the possible options and allows you to come in and again upload that data. I won't go through the whole thing, but uh, it's there for you to, uh, to uh, get started and to play with. So uh, thanks for your time.